climate change can happen really fast. And that's what the people of Northern Europe found out during the Younger Dryas, which occurred about 14,000 years ago. This was a climate change that decreased the global temperature so drastically that it created another ice age. As far as ice ages go, it was a rather short one and only lasted about 1300 years. Needless to say, the people that were enjoying a relatively warm world were probably very surprised to be thrown into the middle of a seemingly out of nowhere ice age. And those that lived in Northern Europe really had it rough, since Northern Europe is already pretty chilly in normal conditions. Fortunately, we humans have some coping mechanisms for the cold. Humans shiver when they are cold. This rapid movement is good at generating heat. Have you ever noticed that you have the need to release fluid from your body when you're cold more so than when you're warm? This happens because the removal of extra fluid increases the sugar and ion concentration in your body which changes the freezing point of liquids in your body. When things start to get really cold, you start to go numb. This is not a result of the sensory cells getting overloaded to not be able to handle the cold anymore. Rather, it is blood will stop traveling to your extremities and instead concentrate around your vital organs to try to keep them warm. You can live if you lose your arm to frostbite, but if your heart freezes, you don't become the white witch. You die. If somehow you have survived the cold this long and you are in the middle of an ice age, you develop a specialized set of cells. These are called brown cells and they form brown fat. Brown cells only objective is to generate heat. When you are in an extended period of cold, the formation of brown cells are triggered. The cells burn the sugar inside them to generate heat, and the heat keeps you alive. Despite all the adaptions that humans have to survive in the cold, the sudden onset of the younger dryas meant that another series of genes were selected for. Genes that cause adult onset or type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes occurs when the body becomes immune to its own insulin, at least partially. Insulin is what allows sugar to go from the blood into the cells. Without insulin working properly, blood sugar levels will rise. The body is a delicate place and this increased sugar in the bloodstream leads to hyperglycemia, which does a whole variety of bad things such as nerve, kidney, and cardiovascular damage, all of which can lead to death. This is why type 2 diabetes is bad today. However, back in the days of the Younger Dryas, this was great. This is where we revisit brown cells. Brown cells, unlike other cells of the body, do not require insulin for sugar uptake. That means that all this extra sugar that is in the bloodstream can be used to create more brown cells. More brown cells equals more heat. And more heat equals more not freezing to death in the middle of an ice age. Which is a good thing. If we flash forward to today, it turns out that Northern Europeans or descendants of Northern Europeans have some of the highest rates of type 2 diabetes. This is because they are more genetically prone to have type 2 diabetes. Perhaps today's disease is yesterday's savior.